thank you for inviting me. And um, today, uh, as you know, we're going to forge, or i going to forge an elephant head. I had this idea for this project. It's, um, it's kind of a fun project. So I did it just for my kids a long time ago because I uh, sometimes I do this, uh, this door latches and they always remind me an elephant, you know, with the trunk here and they only need some ears and you have this elephant. And um, this is where the idea came from. And as I said, I did it a long time ago. So I made a couple of tries yesterday. Um, I tried to keep it very simple because, um, you know, we have one and a half hour and I want to talk a little bit and show you my work, show you my techniques maybe. Um, and uh, so I tried to keep it simple. And this, uh, my work should be uh, uh, for you some inspiration, you know, to do it better, to do it differently. Uh, you always can learn, even from the from a bad blacksmith when you watch him uh, work, or if you have a student, you always can learn from him, you know, to see what is he doing right, but also what is he doing wrong. And um, I hope everything is going to be perfect today. Uh, in Poznan, we have uh, about 30 degrees. It's very hot and the temperature is rising. Um, the material I will start with is some uh, 50 to 8 millimeter uh, flat bar. Uh, I used to uh, change the material. Uh, first, I used some very, very, um, uh, some other material, and then uh, you can use it also, but you have to move the material back and to forge like, to forge it very wide on this side. So I decided to do it uh, differently today, to forge down the 50 uh, millimeter material to 25. So um, I start my, start my work today with the power hammer uh, because unfortunately I'm alone today in the forge. So, you know, I have to uh, improve myself and uh, I have some other tools I, I always use when, I, when I'm working alone. Uh, another tool besides the, the power hammer is um, this little device. Uh, it's called uh, Blacksmith Little Helper. I found this uh, on the internet a long time ago. And this is like a guillotine tool. You have two dices, you know. You put your material uh, between and you can uh, change the dices from flat to round, whatever you need. And this is very cool when you work alone. You don't have a helper who will, you know, uh, uh, use the hammer for you, so you have to work with stuff like this. Uh, I very like it. I use it a lot for small projects, of course. Um, well, let me tell, me tell you a few words about myself. Uh, my name is Andreas. Uh, I live in Poznan. Uh, Poznan is a big city uh, close to the west uh, border with Germany. And I am working with steel for about 12 years. Uh, not only blacksmithing, I worked uh, also in other metal uh, uh, workshops. But blacksmithing was always something I, I did uh, in my free time when it wasn't uh, possible to do it at work. Uh, I learned uh, blacksmithing in Berlin. This is where I moved with my family to make this education there. And it was a very inspiring time because um, here in Poland we have, or I know a lot of blacksmiths who are working uh, in, on the countryside. And in Berlin I had to uh, know blacksmiths who are working in the city. And 
in the city you have different projects you know a lot of restoration reconstruction of uh, uh, of, of uh, stuff from the beginning of the 20 uh, uh, century and it was very interesting okay i have my material almost ready uh, if there are any questions uh, let me know and i try to you know answer as fast as possible it's going to be loud for a couple of minutes but i think uh, i will use only one heat for the power hammer and the rest i will forge by hand i move the camera a little bit so you can see our green baby it's a German uh, Becke power hammer. Uh, I put it on right now so it gets noisy. I stop talking for a minute. Okay, welcome back. Um, this is what I forged on the power hammer. It's all I need. Forged to, down to about 25 millimeters, and the rest I'm going to do by hand. Now I need to um, find the right uh, uh, form for this uh, for this head. I'm gonna round it a little bit and try to move it uh, to the center you see it's a little bit off center because the dices of the power hammer are not perfect matching so this is something i do on the anvil yeah uh, let's see i see only me Okay, <laughs> a lot of people there. Um, yeah, you see, I'm not this uh, strong blacksmith, so for me, it's very important to use uh, the right technique. And this is something I learned in Berlin. Um, I met the uh, uh, once uh, this uh, Israeli and uh, blacksmith Uri Hofi, and um, yeah, he's a pretty cool guy, and he has. Uh, had a lot to, to say about uh, forging techniques and for me it was very inspiring because when you start forging you always try to uh, work as fast as possible and to hit it very hard and after three hours you know ah oh, my you know everything is hurting every joint is hurting your back is hurting and the next day oh, you can open your hand so that was something that really um, 
was, was something I, I thought a lot about. So uh, I will tell about it more. Now what do we know? Find this, this right uh, form for the head. I use the horn. Uh, the other mouth, or I don't know, maybe it's not so good. And something I learned in Berlin is uh, how to hold the hammer. I always hold it very strong and hit it very hard, and uh, I always get tired. And now I hold it like with two fingers, and um, I let the hammer do the work. You know, the hammer and the gravitation. So always keep the hammer very high and let it fall. It's broken. Okay. Um, maybe this is something you know. Maybe this is something you know differently. But uh, today I'm talking about my working experience. So this is how it looks. And uh, I do a lot of uh, blacksmith workshops with young people. And this is something I always talk a lot about, you know. These joints here, you have to you know, be careful because I have problems with my elbow, you know, when I use the wrong technique. So for me, for me it's something really important. Because I want to forge a couple of years more and not stop in two or three when my elbows are broken. Okay, let's forge it. Let's straighten it up a little bit. Then, yeah. Every time I see this elephant, it, it looks a little bit different. So let's see how it is today. Uh, what I need is uh, to make the start of the ears. You see, uh, these two parts are going to be the ears. Um, this is uh, actually something I saw very similar by two, uh, two, um, from another blacksmith and I just pick it up. I will use a fuller to uh, make the start of the ears, and then I forge them out. When I use the fuller, 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 I don't know how to say it, then I can uh, exactly, you know, control where the ears are starting. So, let's do it. I'm very sorry for my nose, but I forgot my allergic pills, and uh, today it's like water from the nose. Okay. There's my little color like this. Uh, if you work as a blacksmith, you know, you always... Uh, Need a special tool for every occasion, <laughs> or not a, not always, but uh, but often, and uh, it's part of your work to create uh, uh, your tools. You know, sometimes they are very beautiful. Sometimes you have to make something very fast, and you improvise like this. I use this old chisel, you know, round it a little bit, weld it on a handle, and it's okay. You know. And of course, I did it for one job, but now it's, uh, I think, four years with me. So I always try to do it uh, beautiful as possible, but it's not always possible. Sometimes it has to be fast, and you can't wait. Now I try to move the camera a little bit, so you can see what I am doing. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, you can see the anvil, all right. I hope I don't hit the phone. Okay, I'm gonna work here. 
Try to use the brush as often as possible. So it's important for the for the surface to work in the end. Yes. And now we start. Start here. And then the first piece, I try to sketch it. And the next piece, I'm going to finish it. Maybe I. It's finished the front. Oh, I go slowly. It's too hot today. It's too hot today. It was fast. Okay. Let's do another heat. Is it also so hot at your place? Because we have about 35 degrees now, and it's the worst day to get the, you know, to work in the forge. Okay, keep it going. Now I'm going for the next heat and I forge out the ears like this. I can feel where the where this uh, position is where I should hold the, the the material so it's easy for me now to forge it out on the edge of the anvil. Always clean up the anvil because you never know, maybe you have to eat from it, so it has to be always perfect and shiny. I think today I can make some eggs on it. Right. Now I have to move the camera a little bit. Okay, maybe it works. Okay, everyone. Let's do it. All right. Now I have to move the camera. Make the other side. Or maybe I show you a little bit closer what I have done. I don't know if it's too shiny, but okay, well, you can't see anything, right? Right. So maybe later when it's colder. As I said in the beginning, um, this is just a really fun project and uh, it was an idea I had. Uh, so, you know, I, it don't have any use, any special use. I did it for my daughter once.
There is one more thing, because uh, I always work with an elephant that was in my head. I never watch, uh, you know, some drawings or some photos of an elephant. Uh, so it's very, you know, like a, like a freehand drawing. And um, about the, the, the ears, you can form them as you as you like, you know. I think an elephant is more like like this, but in the end, uh, it's something you know, you do like you feel, and this is what I do today. Uh, I leave the ears for now like this. I go back to, for them later when I finish the the uh, cut and finish the uh, punching the hole in, in for the nose or the trunk actually. So. Yes, that's pretty much for now. I'm going to the cutting. I cut this uh, uh, one time, uh, this tuck, you know, with a uh, with a chisel. I'll show you in a second. Just get the heat. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, okay, a little bit of me and a little bit of the end. Okay, that's my cutter, I think it's called. I'm not sure, but as I said, my English is. I learned from uh, from movies and and songs, so it's not much, but it has to be enough for today. Okay, let's go slowly for it, because uh, a mistake now is uh, wouldn't be so good. So I start very slowly to draw the lines. Do it small, big. Okay. So it's going to be a mammoth today. It's long, tough. Okay, now I know where it starts, where it begins. Okay, working alone is always, you know, not so cool. So it's a little bit slower, but anyway, you have to do it. it doesn't matter if you have a helper or not. Okay, here I have some water. And of course, I have this metal plate for the last cut, so I don't hit my anvil. Sorry, my nose again. Thank you. 
Now uh, something happened that I don't want it to. One, uh, one task is a little bit longer. Uh, this happens a lot of times that you cut something and one part is longer than the other. And I always try to keep going. And in the end of the work, I you know, short uh, the, the part that is too long. Oh, the material is cold and it's, uh, it, it broke by itself and it's cold enough. I'm going for one more heat to separate the, the top. No, it looks like this now. So not so good because I have to go from the other side one more time to clean it up. Then I open them up clean them a little bit and they will be all right. Ooh. Andreas, can I ask you, uh, you say that you learn in something uh, from Yuri Hoffi? Uh, can I ask you what is the coolest or most uh, memorable life hack do you <laughs> do, do you can remember? Uh, one more time, I didn't didn't get the first uh, part of the question. I'm sorry. Can you ask me one more time? Um, you say that you learn um, or take um, a master class from Yuri Hoffi. Yes, okay, okay. Uh, I and took a master class from him. Okay, what's the coolest part I remember? Well, um, I didn't took part of this class, but he was doing these classes at our school. And we all were there and, you know, watch him work and listen to him. <laughs> so we took a free class, you know. Um, well, the most inspiring thing for me was uh, actually to see him working because he is such an old guy and this was about, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago maybe. Uh, and you know, he had to sit, he had uh, a very uh, soft grip because he, his hand was, uh, had some hand problems. And the coolest thing was uh, to hear him talk about the ergonomics. He talk a lot about it, you know, about energy, about, you know, um, mechanically, you know, how you, how you see it, your body, you know, you have these joints everywhere and uh, how to proper use them because his work, you know, he, he do nothing special. He, you know, make, make a lot of fun projects and, and uh, it's, it's not my, you know, I don't want to, to you know, talk about his style. Uh, but uh, about his technique, and this was the coolest part, because when you see a guy who is about, you know, 70, and he is forging uh, maybe four times faster than you, um, then you think, okay, what, what he does differently, you know? And, uh, and then you hear him talk, and uh, I will go back to this later. I can show it in, in practice what, what was... Uh, uh, inspiring point for me because uh, he didn't invent, you know, forging. Uh, he, he just, uh, you know, take all the the cool stuff and put it together. You know, he was going around the, the, the world and talking with a with lot of blacksmiths, watch them uh, work. And um, every blacksmith have a different tradition, a different technique. And he just put it together, you know, and this is, this is, uh, this is a good work, I think, he done. Um, yeah, so uh, it, it was just like this. You know, not, not the, the work, not the final work, what he done, but the way he did it. This was cool, you know. Because, you know, when you, I was a uh, young guy, you know, a lot of energy, and uh, I was forging slower than him. And it was like, what? You know, and uh, 
then you start thinking, okay, what can I change? You know, how I can use the hammer differently, how I can use the energy differently, you know, my, my uh, arm differently, and this was pretty much it. I'm still not good at it because I, I always get uh, hurt somewhere, but uh, it's good to think about it, you know, while you're working. Okay, I'll go back to the seat. Because a lot of people say that, you know, okay, he didn't invent anything and, uh, you know, he, he, a lot of people don't like him. Okay, maybe you don't have to like him, but when you see him working, it's, it's pretty cool, you know. You always can have your own uh, tradition, your own, own, own uh, uh, techniques and stuff, and it's okay. For me, this was very cool. I like it. But uh, the workshop was uh, too expensive for me. <laughs> so, so I only, only watched, watched and listened. Uh, I will uh, try to short explain uh, Ukrainian participants uh, what do you uh, talk. Uh, uh, Andreas Rospovidov що він колись навчався у Юрі Хофі. Це майстер, яке має, який має ізраїльське походження. Так ось, це було 10 років тому, і він був дуже вражений, що він побачив майстра, якому 70 років, а він працює в 10 разів швидше, ніж він. І більшу часть свого, своєї доповіді або там, свого майстер-класу Юрій розповідав про ергономіку роботи ковалем, про те, як правильно наносити удари, тримати молот та працювати, про енергію та про те, як тіло робить ці удари. Okay, I took the elephant to the uh, guys uh, to to clean it a little bit up. You no, know? just a little bit edges. They don't have to be as sharp like this. And uh, uh, using a file while the material is hot is pretty much cool because it gets very fast and it looks cool after the work. Cool to say. Okay, clean it a little bit, take the brush, all right, and now, oh. now I have this task, uh, they look not very special yet, but um, at first I try to, you know, uh, do everything, um, the basic of everything, and then in the end, I'm going to finish it, you know. So I leave this, I leave them alone, and now I concentrate on the, uh, on punching the hole for the uh, trunk. I have a tool for it. I can show you. Actually, a little. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, uh, yeah. Don't have it anymore. Give me a second. I find it. Okay, I got it. I cleaned it up before. It's just uh, a square punch, very small one. I don't need a big one. I need a hole for about one centimeter to five millimeters, something like this. It doesn't even matter if it's perfect, you know, some uh, dimensions, because I adapt uh, later the trunk for, for the hole. So, whoops. oh yeah, I need the water, of course. And like before, okay, no, I need some glow. Yeah, safety, you know. Very important. Wow. 
Okay, let's prepare the punch, the whole punch. So I use the spot where I think it should be. There are no, you know, I don't know what are the dimensions of a real elephant. I don't care right now because I do my own. Here is a little bit close to get through, or maybe this one. Where are we going to make it? Always good when the material is getting a little bit cold by the end of the punching, because then. It's, uh, I don't know the word, but it's, you know, it, it, it breaks at some point. Okay, we're going through. Going through the small hole here. I hope I can find it. No. Come on. Okay, we got it. I punched the hole where I think the trunk should be. And I go back, heat it up, and wide it a little bit more to have more space for the trunk to move in the end because this is the fun part of it, you know, to make this nose, uh, this trunk move. Um, and something that was very important for uh, also my, my blacksmith master where I was learning in Berlin was to use the hammer properly and um, you know you have thousands of different hammers and every hammer is good for something and you have to know which hammer is good for you to you know to um, make the most out of it and I like the hammers when they are very compact, you know, very short, very thick in a square. And I use a lot of, uh, I work a lot uh, with, the, with the edges, you know, to move material fast. And what also is something that uh, Uri Hofi told, and also my, my blacksmith uh, master, where I was learning, is that it's good for the hammer when it's short because then when you use the corners the hammer is not moving left and uh, left and right I think this is enough for me. I hold like this. And now we get to the next part, which will be the trunk. So I leave the head by side. I come back to it later to finish it. But now we're going to forge the, the trunk out of, uh, I think, 16 millimeter round bar. And uh, now I'm going to use my blacksmith device that I showed in the beginning. Uh, the great little blacksmith helper, or oh, it's called, I don't know. Blacksmith little helper, I think. Yes, this is a device I use a lot. I use a lot when I'm alone. Uh, now I put it some uh, very uh, flat uh, slices inside 
because uh, the thing, uh, the first thing I have to do with the trunk is to prepare the part that is going inside the hole. Um, for me, it's important that it will be in the center of the material. So uh, it will be, would be very, very hard for me to work on the anvil, you know, and um, flatten the material from both sides similar, similarly, similarly. So I use this device so I can uh, forge from two uh, directions uh, at the same time, you know, and then I can uh, forge the material, you know, exactly in the center. So uh, the material I use for these guys is maybe uh, someone can use this information. Um, this is some, uh, some hard steel. It's uh, used to make uh, this uh, oh my God. Uh, working machines, you know, uh, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> because I don't know the word for it. Construction uh, steel, uh, steel for something, machines, engineers. Yeah, for uh, machines. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and this is what I'm going to do now. Um, I will use another hammer for this. Because the material is uh, a little bit hard, so it's, it's, I, I don't like to use uh, my forging hammer uh, on, on um, tools. I did it today, but I tried to, uh, to avoid it because the forging hammer is always a little bit uh, softer than a regular, you know, tool, and it can be, you know, it can get some uh, ugly places inside by hitting the, the hard material. Okay, so I'm going into this device and I'm going by an angle of uh, about 45 degrees because I want the trunk to go down outside of the, of the head and go down. I'll show you in one second. Always working from one side and from the another side. Always turning the material to have much as possible control about what's happening. Okay, it's in the middle, it's okay. The device is a little bit loose, but it works anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, what I meant with this angle is. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, I, I put it inside like this, you know, and then like this to get uh, to get this line, you know, by this angle that it came out of the head of the elephant and it goes down straight. Okay, keep it up. Too much talking. Uh, because I, when I did it straight, the elephant just looked like this and doesn't look so cool, it's much cooler when, you know, when the trunk is going down. Uh, more cool or more effective is of course, forging an elephant from one piece, something I didn't done yet, but I think it's, uh, it's the next project maybe. <laughs> we will see what my kids say, if they like it. Okay, it's hot. It's hot. And now um, I'm going to draw this out so that it fits into this. Oh, shit. What happened here? You saw this? Okay. This only happened uh, live uh, on TV, you know. Okay. That's live, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's an old hammer. You deserve a break. I 
take away the water before it goes out. A little bit of uh, Ordnung, how the Germans say. Okay. So, uh, I do one more thing on this bar. Show you in a second what I have done. Okay. Uh, this nose, this part is going to get go inside of the head, and I try to make uh, okay it is too uh, to make it uh, close to the to the. Uh, uh, di diameters of the hole, and then I try it a couple of times, and you know, make it uh, go so far as possible, uh, as needed to uh, let the trunk move, but not fall out. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now we have small parts, so. Uh, very gentle forging. I still let the device here because it helps me to control and uh, to, to uh, get a higher precision. I'm not able to uh, explain everything in English what I'm doing, but I will show you in a couple minutes when I get on with it. Okay, now I use the, uh, I don't know if you see this, but I use uh, the corner of the hammer, you know, to move the material very fast and aggressive. You also can use uh, the horn or you can use the, the anvil. It's not necessary to have a compact hammer, you can use any hammer, then you use different parts of the anvil. I always uh, said to my, my well, um, students, uh, which came here for blacksmith classes, you have to know your anvil. You know, you have to know all the edges. Every centimeter of your anvil, you have to know which, which edge you use for which, uh, uh, which work, you know. It, it can't be like this and you come to the anvil and you don't know what to do. Maybe here or here, no, you have to know, okay, this is the round corner, this is the sharp corner. You know, we have don't, no time for thinking. When the material is hot, you have to work. And you have to know where to work and which tools you have to use. Okay, gentle, 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 gentle. So see, okay, it's small. Okay, it's almost okay. Over to you. No, it could be going a little bit deeper. So uh, I forged a little, forged it a little bit more in this part with the device, so I can push it as far as possible. Uh, into this uh, elephant head, you know. And then I have in the back this little part. I can use my finger and, you know, keep it up and down. I know it's uh, crazy. But I told you it's a fun project and uh, it should be an inspiration, you know, maybe to do something much cooler. Or you had a similar idea, idea before. Uh, okay, no, I don't have time for talking right now. Let's watch. Let's put it in the device. Again. Let's go. Oh, uh, 
I always try to work from all the sides. Now turn it around. Then you have the most control of what's happening there. Maybe I have to use the file in the end to, you know, take off some edges. We shall see. But it looks okay to me. I yeah, like this. Very small stuff. And now we're going to the trunk. Now uh, I have to forge uh, a lot of material as fast as possible. So I will use this uh, technique about, I, I was talking about, you know, on the anvil. Uh, I try to hold the material uh, always this uh, half millimeter above the, the anvil's anvil surface. Uh, it keeps the material longer hot uh, because the anvil, of course, takes the energy from uh, the heat energy from my from my steel, uh, and I keep it always a little bit in the air. And I hit uh, with this uh, edge of the hammer. You can also use the edge of the anvil or, or bow, or of course, can use the the horn. It's you know different. Workshops, different styles, different envelopes, and different handles. Uh, you have to know what is working best for you. What? Okay, give me a second. I have to drink again. Ah. So, uh, are you are you all blacksmith? Yes. Okay. That that makes me even more nervous. <laughs> you know how it is when everybody are watching and uh, and you have to work. <laughs> but um, I had once this situation. I I attempt this. Uh, I'm sure you know the the Helsin, uh festival blacksmith. Festival in Czech Republic, Helsin, but uh, Helsin, and this is a big uh, blacksmith uh, uh, meeting, and I I went there and I think I thought okay, maybe you know I just you know a young blacksmith, but I can't go there and not forge anything, so I decided to do a little project. On the day before, I tried it. No, I, I didn't even try it. I didn't even try it. I go there with a friend, and then we had, uh, you know, our number, we start, and then they say, okay, you have one hour. And I think, oh, shit, one hour? <laughs> we never did this before. Okay, let's do it, let's do it. And uh, it, it, you know, the, it was a little, little man, and, you know, first one leg set off, <laughs> And another hand fell off, and but we still keep forging, you know, some fantastic creatures out of it. And um, maybe it wasn't very beautiful, but you know, we we were was there, we were forging, and we had a lot of fun. And sometimes it's, this is the most important part, you know, to to do it. And because when you don't do it later, you can only regret something that you didn't done. And I don't, you know what I mean. So let's do it. Ah, uh, so wet everything. It's wet. Okay. It's right. I leave it on. I later cut this off. I will try to keep the hammer as high as possible. My glasses are falling down because it's so wet. Um, when I'm forging out something, it doesn't matter if it's round or, uh, or square. I always uh, forge, first of all, I forge a square out of it. You know, uh, so I don't have to turn it around. I just work from, from two sides, like this, like this, like this, like this. And then I have a square. And it's uh, for me, it's easier to round the square in the end 
and to uh, get the surface done. Because now when I work, uh, let's call it aggressive, uh, you see there are a lot of, you know, little marks inside the material. And um, I don't care about it because I know in the last heat, I'm going to round it and it's gonna look uh, good and you don't see this anymore. But the most important thing is of course, uh, uh, you know, work hard, but smart and uh, fast as possible. So uh, I was try to get it done with uh, at, uh, the least numbers of heat. Of course, now I have to talk, of course. And it's cold again. Okay. Oh my God. My, my glasses are, are swimming on my nose. <laughs> I have to be very careful and don't fall off. Yeah, what can I say about my work? Ah, well, every day we, I work here every day, but of course we don't forge every day. Um, I try to do it as much as possible. I get uh, a lot of little uh, blacksmith uh, uh, permissions, but uh, the most projects we done here are modern stuff, you know. This is where the, the money is, you know. <laughs> modern, simple, and nothing forged. But um, I don't know how it's uh, in your place, because I think uh, the people are um, more interested in, in uh, handmade stuff now, more and more. I, I saw it in Germany. Of course, in Germany, you know, they have more money for stuff like this. But uh, the people who have money, they're uh, trying to, you know, search stuff that's beautiful, you know, not only modern, but also you can see the value of, of, uh, of the hand, uh, no, of the, the, the handmade. Okay. Let's think how far I'm going to go with this. A little bit more. Sound it up a little bit. Break the corners. I'm going for one more heat, and then I show you how it came out. Um, now I have to find some some uh, diameters. How long should it be? Uh, this is something I try to do before I start forging because when you know how much you want to um, forge something out, you know how much material you need and you can uh, work only on the material you want to stretch and leave the rest alone. Now I worked on uh, uh, too much material, so it was a little bit unnecessary. Uh, I think I'm going for some, I don't know, eight, nine centimeters. Should be okay for the trunk. Maybe eight, eight. so something like this. I always uh, find, you know, a similar um, uh, measure on my anvil, like, you know, eight millimeters is from, is from, okay, from here to here. And now I know I can, I don't need the, the measure tool, measure tool, or however you call it, and I can hold it here. I know this is eight centimeters. All right. So, eight centimeters, like this, okay. Round it, and this round it. Okay. 
looking for the eight centimeters, okay? Now I'm going to cut it off. I heat it up a little bit. And I take, uh, it's called the hot, hot, uh, whatever. I'm sorry, my English is going poorer and poorer as long as I work, because you know, my brain is stopping to work in the seat. I have the tool. Okay, I have two seconds to go. I have it before. You know this, you're working in the black blacksmith shop and most of the day you are looking for the hammer you had in your hand a few seconds ago. Where, where is it? Okay. One. One. Yes, yes. Yeah, by camera. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was uh, no searching for the for the tools which are here. Okay. Um, with this cutting off, I always try to work around the material so I get the nice, most nice uh, cut. You know, not too long. This is it. Almost done. Very soft, very soft. Uh, what was very important when I was a student, my blacksmith master always told me, ah, "Don't hit like this. Hit like this, because when the material is is cutting off, your hammer is going, you know, here and not here." So this is what I tried to do. Okay, almost done. Now I can take the tongs. Use it off. I, now I have a little funny thing. I want to be my trunk. Um, uh, you see, I have this little ugly spot in the end. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, file it, grind it off with the, with the hand file to to uh, yeah work uh, uh, over. Over this here. Okay, that's enough, that's enough. So I have this trunk, it's a little bit shorter than I wanted to. So I'm going to um, forge it out a little bit here. I want uh, the material to be thicker here and here, and here a little bit thinner. So I'm going for this part one more time. Uh, and then it's gonna be okay. I give it the last heat because uh, time's up for the trunk. It has to be ready already. So I want to go back to the head and finish it out because there is still something to do with it. Um, do you prefer to work with, uh, with Coke or with gas? Oh, it's uh, in your workshop. Gas or or coke, you know, for for heating up the material. Uh, yeah, if you are asking me, we are prefer to work with uh, oh. gas because uh, yeah. coil is not 
you you cannot control it, the temperature and uh, it's a very long time for hotting the material yes. uh, yes. that yes. is why yes. when you want to work fast and control temperature you work with gas yes. so we we are prefer to work with gas yes i uh, also like using uh, gas but I'm out of gas now, and the prices are exploding right now. So uh, it's uh, cheaper to use coke right now. I use coke, but uh, you know we have to, like you said, more control of the heat. Uh, you can use in the work with uh, more more elements at once. No, you can put 10 leaves in the fire and they don't burn so gas is of course much uh, much better for for much uh, for a lot of work okay i leave the trunk right now to, to uh, get cold i go back to it uh, in a few seconds now i'm going for the head one more time uh, to finish it because there are still some things to do I want to work on the on the cup, you know, in these ones, uh, to get them in the right shape, forge them a little bit rounder, and bend them to the front of the head. So this is what I what I started. Start. I hope you can see anything, maybe more like this. I'm going to use the little horn, you know, bend them, and a little bit for, for the forging out. Oh, it's going very fast, very thin. Careful. Uh, we don't know how situation is look like in, um, uh, in other countries, but in Ukraine, we are... Uh, uh, working with gas now very carefully because uh, the price uh, on gas is rising uh, up five or six uh, uh, x. Uh, it, it's it's cost maybe uh, um, one 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 dollar. Now it cost b before the war it, it cost one dollar. Now gas is cost uh, three three dollars if I'm not mistaken. It 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 it. It's <laughs> uh, it, it, it's the same here. The gas is very expensive. It uh, when I bought uh, a bottle of gas, uh, it, it's it's uh, now we have uh, the triple triple price since you know one year ago or something one and a half year ago really crazy crazy prices so now i have to go down a little bit yes, also gentle birds you know i should use a small hammer i prefer to work far, uh, hard and fast but sometimes you have to be gentle with the material Nico, Nico Kaspers, do you have uh, problems with gas in your country? Uh, yes, it's also very expensive now. Yeah, it's, it's very expensive. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, that is just why I don't use gas now. I use only coke because it's uh, still a little bit cheaper than using gas. And... Uh, I think when it's hot like like now, it's uh, it's better to get the coke on fire than the, the the gas forge because the gas forge is making a lot of more heat in the workshop. I think so. Uh, now I prefer to work with the with the coke forge. Okay. 
going to be a mammoth. That's long, long trunk, uh, top. I have my uh, my start position for the for the task. Uh, they don't, you know, uh, get in in the way of my hammer right now when I'm going to work on the ears and on the eyes. And I put a little mark on the head to, you know, to make it a little bit more uh, to get them a little bit uh, more movement in this in this. Uh, uh, Work, you know, and but I start with the ears right now because the ears uh, need the most of the work because now they look like you know, like a fish or something, and they have to to look like more like like ears to be to be more you know uh, plastic, more more moving, and I don't like the shape yet. Uh, use the word coal. Uh, coke is something different. <laughs> no, um, no. I, uh, actually, I, I think it's, it's. I don't know. It's, it's not. It's not coal. It's uh, cock in Polish. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I know. But but the, yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know, you know the word. I mean, okay. uh, it's uh, okay, so I use the wrong word. So for, for no, no, it's not the wrong word, but, <laughs> but it sounds very funny. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you say in Polish, uh, you know, uh, you're on gas, it means you're drunk. And uh, when I when I talk with my my colleagues here, yeah, today, yeah, what you're doing? I'm going on gas, so it, it means actually you're going drunk or. Yeah, I'm going on coke. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good party. <laughs> well, it's very similar words, yes. But uh, yeah. But the only only white stuff I have here is is the the borax for forge welding. Okay, I'm going for the ears. I'm going to use my hammer like this to, to you know, move the material to the side. I try to move the material, not the hammer. I you know, pick one place and the hammer is bouncing. I'm not using a lot of energy. I just let the hammer bounce because it's very thin material and you don't have to, you know, push it to the edge. Let it flow, let it flow. Because actually the material is floating, you know, like, uh, like cream. <laughs> and, um, I think uh, this is this is something that uh, I also learned from my first blacksmith uh, master um, is the way to you know understand the material because uh, it's like having some uh, some mass some material and uh, you have only this material and you can now you can uh, find the possibilities to move it where you want it to have you know. And uh, it's not only you know, forging and let's see what's coming out, but uh, when you understand the, the way the material is moving, you can exactly control it where it goes. You know. Uh, I know you all are blacksmith, so I'm sorry when I tell you stuff you know, but uh, you know, what can I say? <laughs> it's my five minutes <laughs> today, so. Like I said, I, I uh, tell you about my experience and my work. Let it sound, let it sound. Oops. 
using the edge and this is why I like the hammer because when I use the edge you see it's uh, it's very balanced and it's not it's not it's not falling very hard to the side you know when I work like this this is why I like it uh, but I also use other other hammers you know it depends what I'm doing uh, you can use the edges, you can use a more round hammer, you know, use it in, in, the, in this way. All a matter of, of what you're doing, where you're going with the material. Okay, let's see a little bit this ear. Very, very gentle. Very gentle. Okay. Um, okay, I like it more. Later, I'm going on the wooden uh, wooden stock, and you know, bring some some movement into it. But first, I have to finish everything else, and then I can you know let it let the ears uh, move a little bit more. Whoa. Late. I didn't realize it's late like this. Okay, so I have to hurry up. Good, 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 good. Um, now I'm going to the trunk one more time. And uh, twist the head, twist the head because it, it speeds it up warm and when the material is warm you have to work. Uh, now I need my devices for making the eyes. I have uh, a little riveting tool it looks like this. And this is what I take for the eyes. Nothing special. Okay. Thinking where they could be, these eyes, maybe here. Ah, it's very, very hot. Very, very hot. Try to get them. Close as possible. Ah. Okay. Um, I finished this, and then we go to uh, to the uh, Imaduo. How you say Imaduo? Yes, yes, yes. I forgot the English name for it. I want to uh, put some lines on the trunk. It's uh, very boring when it's when it's only you know round material with no marks. But because it's round, it's hard to put uh, marks in it with the with the chisel. So I'm going to use the file. Well, I have to hurry up. Time is running. Time is running. Running and passing. Okay. Eyes. Eyes. Okay. I've got this. You won't see anything probably because it's very hot. I'll show it later once. Uh, I leave him for a second alone, near to the fireplace, so it don't get cold too much. And now we try to move a little bit around. <clears throat> I can show you uh, the shop if you want. We have uh, two power hammers. This is a German one. 
smaller and we have this big one ms100 is the polish one i think uh yeah we have of course we have a boat back in the shop of course and uh here i have my my uh, you know Madur. and what i wanted to do now with this trunk because it looks so boring you know and i think an elephant when it uh, move his trunk has this these lines, you know, where the skin is, is going over it. And um, I'm gonna put them in with, <clears throat> with a file, which I had recently here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, okay. So, very fast, nothing, you know, deep, just a few marks to keep it a little bit more, you know, uh, natural, a little bit more organic, that's the right word, a little bit organic. Sorry for the noises, I know, then I should put it differently. You can always stop the microphone off or the headphone. Okay, just a little, you know, uh, there's a touch, you know, uh, the painter, how he was called, the TV painter, Bob something, uh, that's his name, he was painting on TV shows and he always said, okay, give it a little touch of this and a little touch of white, and this is what I done, I did a little touch of some lines on the trunk to make it a little bit more you know, interesting. What? So. I, almost, it's not. Mm. Oui. I went. Uh, is it a question for me? No, 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 no. Uh, Nico forgot uh, uh, turn off microphone. But but now okay. it's every, everything okay. All right. Um, I heat up the trunk and I'm, you know, going fast to an end. <laughs> uh, going to an end. So the next stop will be um, the horn. Now I want to bend the, 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 tusk, uh, no, the trunk. So get it heated up as good as possible because is when it okay when I when I ask something or say something? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes. To me or to the? Okay. Uh, I, I notice most blacksmiths when they make horses, uh, sheep, uh, elephants, whatever, m most use eyes all the time, and uh, it, it's my thing. But I never use eyes because I want the movement to talk and not. The eyes, and if you put eyes on something, your eye also goes to the eye. And uh, maybe sometimes it's better just to let the movement speak and not the eyes. It's sometimes getting a lot of Disney-like with eyes. Yeah, it's uh, it's my thing as a sculpture, but uh, I know most blacksmiths use eyes, and I don't mind about it. But I think sometimes focus on movement and not too much about details. Is it okay to say totally. that? Yes, yes, of course it's okay because uh, uh, I agree. Um, and uh, maybe if it would be, you know, a most, more uh, artistic project, it would be important not to, you know, over talk it, you know, um, because sometimes less is more, you know. Um, it can be, you know, an abstract sculpture, but it has everything, you know, like you said. When you put eyes on something, you know, you can put eyes on a on an anvil and it's a dog, you know, it's no, nothing special. I understand it. And it's, uh, yeah, I agree totally. And I think uh, this is the difficult uh, part, you know, to make something uh, that, that isn't, uh, you know, finished, you know, 
it's like it's like you 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 write a poem you know you don't have to use exact words words for something you can use you know uh words around it you know and but you know what you mean and i agree totally yes it's it's the easy way to make eyes <laughs> some kind of course it's, it's not wrong uh, but but i agree totally yes it, i think this is the the real thing to you know to make this stuff without you know um you know without these eyes you know this this uh i, I don't have the words but yes i agree totally but it's, it's difficult it's difficult for, for sure and i i i always admire work that is uh, you know pre-forged and uh isn't you know uh, so directly you know some abstract thinking okay um let's go back to the trunk uh now there are possibility without end to you know get this movement of this trunk you can you know make a hook out of it you can uh, make a door a knocker out of it uh, it depends what you what you know what you what you want it to be um but today we keep it simple and uh yes that's why i use the eyes we keep it simple uh, okay 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 let's see how it fits how it looks so going to get to the end okay almost almost it's okay uh it's moving it's a, it's a long trunk could be a little bit shorter or a little bit more bended we we figure it out in two seconds but now i'm going with this elephant head on the wooden uh you no know, block wooden block change the angle of the camera okay can you see me can you see anything yes okay yes wood is always good so work like this because you know when when you don't want to leave uh, leave too much uh, uh, you say you don't want to destroy the material uh, you only want to bend it so I always use the, this block uh, you can push put uh, anything on it to, to straighten it out to to you know to to keep some some um, uh, metal sheets in form are we going for the ear and i'm going to finish it as fast as possible i know the time is running that's why i try to keep it really simple but you know how it is you try to keep it simple and then it's going out of control I'm still here. <laughs> One second, please. Okay, let's get it on. I have this little uh, English hammer with this, you know, round head. Now I'm going to get some movement into this elephant. Yeah, I try not to inhale this, but only to. Whew, ah, doesn't smell too good. Okay. Okay. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving. So I need a little bit more heat. And at one ear. 
Okay. All right. The ears are moving. I know it's not much, but it will be enough for now for us. You can always push it further. We have to adjust the trunk. So it's almost done, but I need to adjust the trunk so it matches perfectly uh, to avoid to avoid. Uh, oh yeah, sure. This gap between the trunk and the elephant head, you know. You see, there's a big gap, and I want to uh, get the trunk as close as possible to the to the face, call it face of the elephant. And now I'm going one more time for the file, and I have a question for you. Uh, how do you um, finish your work with with what uh, what you put on on your finished blacksmith work. Uh, I know some you can put paint on it, but uh, are you using also some um, other materials like beeswax or or lint oil or, or something? Lint yes, oil. I, I don't um, like to use uh, lint oil. A tar. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes, char. Yes, 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 yes. I never use char because I don't have any. But I I I am behind this wall is a guy who is selling uh uh um, oil and he has uh, you no know, big balloons with lint oil. <laughs> so I only use lint oil. He sells it for free. And I like it a lot how it how it looks. But uh, yes. I don't like to put uh, paint on this on, on blacksmith work. Of course, sometimes you have no uh, other way when it's going outside. But uh, yeah, you do what you can. Just a little bit work on the edges. You know, letting them out. Get closer to the face. Let's make it fast. So, um, going back here. Whoops. Put my elephant here. Now, uh, one thing which is important. Um, I, uh, mostly the work is done, you know. Um, you can always play a little bit more with these edges here because they are very, very rough. But uh, as you see, you know, the time is running and I don't want, you know, to make a lot of small things outside the camera and, you know, and file and, and stuff. So I really uh, uh, concentrate on, on fast working and don't uh, do, do too much. Uh, little you know steps because you know you have to watch this and uh, after one hour it gets boring um so i really try to make it fast um of course there is a lot of things you can do uh slower work a little bit uh you know uh, accurate more accurate and and make it more beautiful of course um the elephant is working not perfectly so I should uh, overdone, overdo this part here because it's a little bit too thick, you know. It has to move, move in this in this hole. Um, and one more thing to uh, you know, stop the trunk from falling out. 
uh, after I, I uh, make this perfect matching and perfect moving, uh, I twist this part, you know. I forge it out a little bit more when it, when it uh, puts into the hole a little bit more wider and then you can twist it and twist it like this that it don't fell out, you know. You know what I mean? Is this uh, understandable? Yes. So it's one possibility. The other possibility to stop the trunk from falling out is to do it a little bit different. Um, and I have another elephant. I did a couple yesterday, a couple different, every time different, and to, to, to try to find the best way. Um, you can, you can uh, also uh, put, the, you know, put the ears a little bit higher. It looks more like a Mickey Mouse then, but you have space for riveting the elephant head, you know, riveting it uh, below the ears. And then you have this, uh, you can rivet it and it don't sell out, you know. It's, it's even uh, more aesthetic and, and better working than doing it uh, with, with twisting this, this part. Um, I, uh, what can I say? Uh, yeah, this, this it all depends from uh, what start material you use, you know. Like I said, I use today this, this 50 to 8 millimeter steel, but you also can, can go in the other direction. I mean, you can, uh, I don't remember the word for, for doing it, but you can push the material, you know, and, you know, get this, uh, a blo uh, get this uh, to about 50 millimeters from 25, you know. But you have to, to be careful to get the right thickness to get a lot uh, to get enough uh, ear material, you know. It's called uh, uh, upsetting. Upsetting, right? Yes, uh, I couldn't do um, I have one more elephant head. It's, it's mm. It is not not today. embossing. It's ups upsetting. Upsetting, yes. It's possible, yes. Yes, yes. Of course, of course. Uh, for example, I, I make the first try out of, uh, I don't even know what this is, 20 to 16 or something like this. And, and I upset it to, uh, to uh, 40 to 8, you know. It was uh, a lot of work. Of course, you can do it like this. Um, but sometimes when, it's, when you don't have the time and you have other materials, of course, you, you, you're searching for the the easy way because I think uh, to upset it is, is, ve is a very nice word and but in the end you have asked yourself um, is it necessary you know is it necessary to upset it and do a cool work and you know a lot of work and moving a lot of material and uh, if, uh, if in the end doesn't matter for the effect, you know. So I always ask myself, but we, you know, which material is the best. Hmm? But we blacksmiths are very lazy. So we always choose the material yes. closest to the final product. Otherwise right. you work so too much. What I'm, I want to yes. Ah. yes, yes, this is it. This is pretty much it. And this is why we have the power hammers and, and all these devices, you know, because um, yeah, call it lazy or call it, you know, uh, smart. <laughs> call it smart because, uh, yeah, in the end, sometimes, uh, sometimes it's, ma it's matter, you know, it's, uh, when, uh, which material you use and sometimes you have to put a lot of work in, into it because in some one point you need this thick material, to, you know, to, to finish the work, like you said, but you have to overthink it twice or three times to be sure, okay, this is the right way, and it's totally um, uh, it's logical, you know, to, to make it like this. I think this is very important, and this is why I I, I learned that uh, the blacksmith uh, work is most of the of the blacksmith work is going, you know, here, because um, what I always uh, 
try to remember is before I start working, make a plan, you know, a point plan in my head, you know, what I do in which, uh, you know, what I do first, second, third, uh, because, you know, some, some things you can't, you can't be undone and some things can't be done after you've done something else, you know, and um, it's easy to work fast and don't think and let's see where the material is going, you know, but it, it, I think this is where I, where I want to go, you know, where I, where I want to be in a situation where I uh, know, okay, I have to do this, 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 and then I'm sure it, it worked out, you know. And this is uh, the, how uh, do you say, experience. This is the experience you, you need to make, you know, a lot of years of working and different work. And, and I think very important is to watch other people work, you know, because, um, it's okay. I, I come back to Ori Hoki because <laughs> I don't know why he's, he's to start today. Uh, he is a nice guy. Uh, but he also said one thing in, in this in this workshop where he was uh, teaching that uh, a good teacher is learning from every student, even the bad student, you know. Uh, because you see other people work and you, you can you can be richer for, for, for what you see, you know, and, and get experience from, from them, you know, see how they work right, how they work wrong. And uh, um, you have to, you know, be very uh, small because, you know, you can't watch on other people and say, oh, he's doing everything wrong because this is easy. No, I know, I know this from experience. Uh, I know blacksmiths, they are standing beside you, you know, and they're rushing, you know, oh, the fuck is he doing? No, oh, what's he doing? Oh, you make it wrong, you make it wrong. Okay, but this is, it's easy to, to, you know, to attack people, say what they're doing wrong. Uh, but I think it's, it's not okay. You know, you have, even, even watching the, the worst blacksmith, you can learn something from him, you know. I think this is important. Uh, my the, the thing we're teaching. Is, the thing we're teaching uh, most do wrong is uh, that they want to prove how how uh, how good they are in working and the way of teaching is to make the student much better than you are otherwise you failed in teaching and that's the way so that's that's very stupid to criticize because it's no use everyone has its own way and be proud of it never lose uh, contact with yourself and never look up to to other black men. Oh, I want to be like him. I want to be like him. Uh, I've been doing this for more than 40 years and uh, I'm still scratching the service. That's the that's the good thing with blacksmithing. And I never had yeah. uh, I never had problems with that uh, oh they create are uh, you doing it stupid or things like that they have respect everyone is doing their best i think you what you did today was very i, I think you should be a teacher <laughs> i i try to be i try to be a teacher um i do a little blacksmith workshop with you know one or two persons uh and i have a lot of students which came only once just for you know father son and they want to do something something cool but uh, I always I never I never try to show them oh it is another very interesting thing about teaching and learning um, it's not about the ready receipts you have to learn you know because uh, there are a lot of, of blacksmith tutorials in the internet for example and you know, you can watch them and you know, okay, okay, okay. And then you do it. And uh, when you do it like this, the only thing you learn is how to do this one thing. But what you have to learn in every blacksmith class you go is, um, no, it's, it's, it's not the receipt, but it's, it's, the, it's the thinking of the material is um, how to explain it? 
I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with the, with the right words, but uh, to understand, you know, when, you, when, when, when we talk about a receipt for a soup, it's not about, you know, writing down the receipt, but understand which flavor is important to put in the soup, uh, which tool you should use, how you use the tool, and uh, even if you, you, if you fail to, to uh, make the, the object that is in the workshop, it doesn't matter because what you are learning is the art of, of uh, working, you know. This is what, what is important. Not, not the ready receipt, you know. You come out and, uh, oh, I can forge a hook right now. You know, I can forge a hook. But this is not what it's about, you know. You have to understand the material, understand, you know, your body, even, even this is important, you know, I think it's very important to understand your body, uh, to understand, you know, all the, the, the energy that is going, you know, the, the movement of the hammer, the mass of the hammer, the anxiety, you know, um, it's like Einstein said, E is, is uh, MC to, you know, two, I don't know with English, but you know what I mean, you know, this are stuff when you understand this, you know, you can forge better, I think, it's because it's the key. It's the key is understanding. Understanding and after understanding comes the knowledge. And I'm really, if, when you scratch the surface, uh, Nico, I don't know where I am. I am some way behind you, you know. No, so, I, don't, I don't think that because it's, it's about, it's more about uh, being comfortable. When you start blacksmithing, you have no borders. You are everywhere. Everything is so fun. You just do things. And when you, when you after a few years, you, you start to make borders where you feel comfortable. And then you can stretch the border to get more. But everything is built on mistakes. Without mistakes, you can't, you can't grow. And that's the, that's the beautiful thing of blacksmithing, because uh, in the beginning you don't have borders and when, but you can get very boring because you keep your safety and never stretch the borders. Many blacksmiths do that because it's safe, but sometimes it's more fun to, to go beyond your comfort zone and find something new because there's always something new. So you can't compare, uh, oh, I'm, I'm not so good as him, or, or he must be very good because he's been working 40 years. That's bullshit. I can be like any amateur still, but the, the thing is to, to um, the thing with blacksmithing is, uh, I compare it always with alcohol. You know, when you drink too much alcohol, you get an addict. A blacksmithing is the same. When you start, you, you think, you, the only thing you do is thinking about the iron and how to work with it. That's the, the beauty of being a blacksmith. And everyone does it in his own way. Never lose that, because that's the beauty of, of when you make things. Do you understand what I mean? I can, I can say it in Dutch also, or in Swedish. <laughs> but it gets oh, no. very... <laughs> No, my, my Dutch and my Swedish is uh, <laughs> not so good. <laughs> I, I don't even know a curse word in Swedish or Dutch, so <laughs> better not. Uh, yes, yes, it, it is like you said. And, and I think uh, it's, it's something uh, I, I love in blacksmithing. It's, blacksmithing is very uh, organic because, um, you know, about hand forging, but you can use machines and, and do repeat things very, very exactly with steel, of course. But uh, when you hand forge, there is no possibility to do one thing exactly the same, you know. It, it, it's sometimes a little bit, you know, movement here, movement there, and the piece, the, the ready piece is going to look a little bit different every time. Every time the heat is different, and this is fascinating because uh, it's, you know, it's like working with, with fire, you know, the flame is never the same, you know, and this is what I, what I love. And also I like that blacksmithing combine a lot of other um, uh, techniques, like you, you have to know about wood, 
you have to know, you know, about machine, about building machines, because, you know, you might make your own devices, you have to repair your stuff, and it's, it's you know, it's really cool. I, um, I can say that I started uh, my, <laughs> um, my uh, I started with painting. I, I was studying uh, three years uh, on the art academy here, art uh, college in Poznan, uh, one year in Dresden, in Germany and I was painting and it was, I didn't like it because it's also very a craft, you know, you have to you make your own uh, uh, um, surface to, to paint, you have to combine colors, you know, it's also a craft, you know, but uh, it was always a little bit beside of uh, reality. It was uh, very abstract uh, a lot of times and I couldn't get along with it. It wasn't my, my place. And then I started doing uh, metal work and it was like, yeah, this is it, you know, doing it by the hands, you see what you're doing and you see the effect what it has and you can repair machines, you can, you know, making tools, forging out stuff. And it was it's just amazing, you know. <laughs> but, but, but I'm still thinking about changing my, my work to, I, I have a dream to be a, um, the car mechanics, you know, mecha uh, to to repair cars. <laughs> the next thing I will do to, to repair cars. But my wife says, no, forget it. Not again. You can't change your profession again. <laughs> so I stay with blacksmithing. Can I ask you, uh, repeat, what uh, what you dream to do? Uh, I'm not understand. Uh, uh -huh. Yes, uh, my next profession after being a blacksmith is to be a car mechanic, Mechan to, uh, to a repair cars, you know. Okay, automobile. okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. <laughs> my, my next dream. <laughs> it's not a dream, that's a nightmare. Are I, I know it. I, I have a I have a Volkswagen uh, transporter, and uh, I know how bad it could be. I am repairing it once a week, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know I know this pain, but you know, just for fun. <laughs> um, let's let's maybe go back to the to the elephant. I, I see if it's if it's cold. Okay. Um, I put the camera a little bit more closer to the to the anvil because I know well, it's going it's going late. But I want to show you the work as good as possible. Uh, okay. Okay. So. Um, this is uh, the elephant from today. <laughs> All right. Um, looks like this. Very, very long trunk. Uh, it, uh, I would not uh, make it shorter, but uh, I always try to make it a lot uh, more moving. When I have parts that are uh, looks too long, it sometimes it's enough when you when you when you bend them a little bit more, you know. Then the material is going, you know, is going back. There's some trick, <laughs> and uh, it it works. It works not so good because I have to, you know, over uh, file it here a little bit to get the movement. But uh, it, as I said, you can, you know, uh, rivet it here and make a hook out of it. You can make a door knocker out of it. This was an idea I had today while forging. You know, when you have this, when you have this trunk, you put it a little bit closer to this place. You put it on your door. You, took, 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 took. you had this, this door knocker. I think it's, it's a good idea for, but no, okay. I, have a, I live in a big house with a lot of, you know, block uh, uh, I don't know the word in English, you know, so I can't put it on my door, but I think it's a, it's a cool, it's a cool idea. Uh, yeah, try maybe someday something different. Um, another reason why I did this today, I, I said it in the beginning. I don't know if everyone uh, heard it, 
but the starting point was this was this stall ledge, you know. Oh my wife, hello, Tishkaya. Um, this is where I, where the idea came from, you know, from this door ledge, and uh, then I go with the flow, you know. There comes some inspiration, and sometimes something cool happens. Uh, yeah, what I can say more. Uh, I'm a little bit tired right now. It's very hot, <laughs> so my not working too too good. Um, yeah, and uh, well, I, okay, I know what I want to say. Something I love moving uh, because riveting is a is a is a technique that is very cool. It's it looks beautiful and you can uh, make rivets, uh, you know, uh, very tight so it's not move. Or you can do mechanical stuff like this, you know, by riveting it, and it still moves, you know. And I, I think this is this is so beautiful, like like tongs, you know. I love making tongs, and uh, if anybody don't know what to forge and want to get some practice, I think tongs are the most important uh, thing to practice for a blacksmith, especially uh, because you never have enough tongs in your work, workspace they always they, the right tongs are always missing and you have to do it them <laughs> constantly new <laughs> for every for every material for every you know part to to get the right grip um can i ask you well you have any so um, uh, me mechanism um, behind you Behind behind you, mechanism you show um, at at the at the floor. Uh, at the floor. Ah, this, <clears throat> this. Yes. Yes. Uh, how it name? Yes. Um. Well. Uh, in the USA, there was a mag. It doesn't exist anymore, but it's still online to get. And it's called the Blacksmith Journal. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not on Blacksmith wrote stuff and really, really beautiful. And the magazine, when you when you can look for it, um, because the Black, Blacksmith Journal is you know, it's something I could read all day long. A lot of beautiful drawings of blacksmith work, uh, of blacksmith, you know, uh, devices and stuff. And this is where I have this from. It was actually in this magazine. Of course, a device like this, you can see in different forms. And uh, it's very easy to, to make. Uh, one second, I put the camera down. Wax. And next. Okay, um, yeah, it's very easy done because it's only two sheets of metal, you know, two sheets of metal uh, with a hole inside, you know, and uh, that's pretty much it. You have this plate on which it stands to have the perfect, uh, you know, stability and um, Pretty much it. You only only thing you really need from better steel is are these uh, these uh, blocks of steel you put inside. I have uh, straight blocks like this, you know, and I have uh, different, for example, round ones, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you work alone, this is a lifesaver. You know, this is this is a lifesaver. And you can, you know, cut it off, cut, cut it off from, from sheet steel. It looks like this from upside. You ha I have this 20, mal 20 to 20 uh, square uh, between, you know, just like that. So um, easy to do. The only problem is always to get the right 
devices, you know, to find the right diameters to to fit inside and stuff. Of course, uh, it has a little. Um, the only problem with this one is that if I want to use uh, a very wide material, you know, you can put it inside because it's you know it's, the hole is, is very very small. I saw other devices in the internet which are you know free. Uh, like this, you know, and then you can put something between that is thick or, you know, anything. Very, very good. I recommend it. <laughs> so, um, what can I show you else? <laughs> um, uh, Maybe I, I, somebody I have questions, uh, dear participants, you can ask now. Yes. Yes, ask me anything about blacksmithing. Maybe, maybe I know. <laughs> My car is broke. What to do? Your car? <laughs> oh, you were a car mechanic, you said. Yeah, but next year, ask me next year. <laughs> okay, that, that will be the next uh, masterclass. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it to, to, to be invited today. Um, I was pretty nervous because, you know, you never know how it worked out. I hope uh, that you could see everything. Uh, I hope the connection was right. Um, because, you know, I see only, I saw only myself <laughs> most of the time <laughs> to control if, if you can see what I'm doing. Um, I hope also that Maybe I showed you something uh, that that can help you in in the in the future with something uh, with your work. Uh, and yeah, I, it's pretty much it what I can say for today. Um, I really enjoyed it, and thank you very much for for watching and for all the questions and for having me here. And yeah. Uh, dear Andres, thank you very much for your uh, workshop online today. Uh, everything is clear and uh, it was a great job. I understand uh, every step that you are doing and I think it will be great uh, uh, when we uh, publish this video uh, of this masterclass in YouTube and people can uh, step by step, uh, watching video and hear about that the principles of the blacksmithing is um, very, very needful as uh, some some kind of skills. Uh, we are very glad that uh, our participants enjoyed us today and I ask him one more time, maybe some questions uh, any have? A last opportunity. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. And I think we, we see, we see again on the next uh, internet event. I will be watching. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you one more time. Okay, thank uh, everyone. Uh, thank you, Andreas. Thank you. I'm in Poland now, and I see oh, okay. your, your online masterclass in Poland. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. So you. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Peace. <laughs> okay, I'm going home. I'm going to drink something and. I'm going swimming because uh, I'm sweating like, a, I don't know, like a pig or something, whatever. Thank you very much and see you, everyone. Have a nice weekend. Thank you very much. You too. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>